Bricks dropped 2.2 beta release yesterday, and you can download this from your dashboard if you want to try it out. But bear in mind, it is a beta release, so please don't use this on a live site. So there's a couple of key new features added in. I'll put a change long link in the description down below so you can check it out for yourself. In this video, we're going to focus on one of the key areas, which is their new framework updates. So this brings with it three key new features. Let's take a look at them in action and how we can actually start to use them. So to access these features, simply come up to the option for your styles in the top, which is the little three symbol. Inside you, we've got all the things we've used to see. Let's go through each one of these and take a look at what they bring to the table. So first of all, let's jump into the colors section. This will now show you all the color palettes you have and any variables associated with them or not associated with them if they haven't been updated. So for our example, though, let's start with a completely blank slate. If we drop this down, you can see default is all we have at the moment, but let's click on the plus and let's create our own custom palette. Call this WP Tuts and click on Create. So now this brings us into a nice, clean, blank starting point. We have our variable name and we have our color. Then you can add your color on the right-hand side. Now there's a lot more options hidden underneath you when you actually start creating the various different variables for your colors. Now you don't have to put a variable name in. If you don't want to, you can simply come in and choose a color. So if you want, you can click on the little dropper and from there we can choose our colors. So let's say, for example, we want to start off with this kind of green color. Let's choose a color that we think is quite nice and click outside and you'll see that's put in the HSL values for it. But if you don't want to do that, you can drop in a hex value, for example. If we do variable for white, you can see it brings in white. Obviously, you could just type in the word white as well, and it will do the same thing, or red or blue or whatever color you want. And if you want to, you could use this as a starting point, click, and you could refine it from here should you want to. And you can switch between the various different color modes available, so your HSL and alpha, your RGB and alpha, or your hex values and so on. So there's lots of ways in which you can choose the color. And if we click on add color, that will create a variable name for us. But it makes more sense to be a little bit more organized and create our own. So when it comes to colors, I'll break things down to your primary and secondary, sometimes our tertiary, other brand colors and things like that, background colors, typography colors, all those kinds of things. So you can create what you need inside you. We'll keep this super simple, call this primary, just so we can see how all these things work. And we'll click on add color. This then takes us into the options for that color. So we can apply dark mode, which is a new feature. We have a switch or toggle to enable light and dark mode. We'll take a look at that in a different video when we take a look at actually implementing this when the final release comes out. But if you ever use any kind of dark mode toggle with any other CSS framework or tool, it's the same thing. You choose the light, your dark, job done. So with that being said, you'll see that we've got our primary, we've got our variable name for it, we've got our color, which again, we can easily change inside just should we want to. You can click on the color chip, change your colors on there. And you'll also notice we've got a couple of options, light shades, dark shades, transparent shades, and utility classes. Now currently, we have none because we haven't created any. And we can delete this, we can edit this, or we can actually create harmonious colors. So let's take a look at the basic options and come back to some of those in a moment. If you enable dark mode, the first thing you'll see is it brings in a second color option and it splits our color chip into two different colors, your light mode and your dark mode. You can easily click on either of these and change them inside here or change them inside the actual value area itself. So if you've got brand colors from a client, you can drop those in where relevant. So let's say we wanted to have green for our sort of dark mode, you can set that. They don't even have to be the same colors. So that enables the dark mode. Then underneath that, you've got your light, your dark, and your transparent shades. So if we enable the light, you'll see this gives us 10 different shades of the color that are lighter than our base color chosen here. And because we have dark mode enabled, you'll see we have the light mode and the dark mode colors. Because I've chosen different colors, you can see a clear differentiation between them. You can easily set this to be less colors. Having 10 colors, your color palette's going to be massive as you start to grow. So maybe you want to set this to be four, and we now have four different shades. You can hover over any of these steps, and we get a couple of icons so we can see exactly what the variable name for this particular shade is. We can copy the value for it, and we can edit this. So if you wanted a different shade, you want to tweak these, you absolutely could do. So again, if you've got brand colors and they have shades and tints and transparent values and so on that are specific to their branding and you need to make sure you're in line with them, you can do it inside you. So those options are there for you. Same thing goes if you enable the dark shades. It's exactly the same. This is just darker than your actual colors you've chosen in your primary and we can enable and disable this. And if you disable it, it says it'll delete those colors from your color palette. 
Transparent shades, as its name suggests, will create transparent variations of the colors we have here, our primary color, for both the light and the dark, should we be using them. So again, we'll just disable that for this example and click OK. Now, there's another cool option here, which is the harmonies. Now, if you've ever used anything like coolers or Adobe Color, for example, you'll know that there are various different color modes that you can tap into to get complementary colors, different things like that. This is quite nifty. So you can see we've got analogous. We can choose from monochromatic, complementary colors, split complementary, and so on. So should you be working with a color scheme, you think, okay, I need some additional colors to bring into my design. I've got one primary color my client supplied me, but we need to add a little bit of variation here. You could easily come in and choose one of these options and generate those colors from here should you want to. So if we come in and choose something like complementary, we'll see that it's giving us this blue color. We'll say generate color, and now we've got our variable primary one, which we could then come in, click to edit this, and we could say we want to change this to, and again, we can enable or disable light and dark modes from here, and we can change the color should we want to, and apply shades, tints, and so on. And if we want to get rid of any of these, you can simply click on the delete and delete it. There you go, job done. So pretty nice to see how easy it is to work with colors inside here. And you'll notice now because we have got some shades and things, it now pops up and the icons tell us we've got light shades, we've got eight dark shades, none, no transparent shades and no utility classes. But let's edit this and you see there's our utility classes. So if we want to have those utility classes based upon the colors we've got here, all we need to do is click to enable them. So your background color, for example, your border color, and you might want to have a stroke color. So those will now create utility classes for those based upon the primary color. So if you wanna see what those variables are, simply hover over, you can see there's our BG primary, our border primary, our stroke primary. If we create secondary, tertiary, and so on, then the variable names for those utility classes will be renamed accordingly. So you get the idea how this works. So it's pretty nifty how the color side of things works. So we'll save that, job done. Let's jump into the editor and take a look at the changes that have been brought into the color palette. While they are useful, I still think there's a lot of work could be done here to make it even better. Jumping into the editor, I've got this plain old bit of texture. I'm going to come into typography and click on our color chip. And you'll see immediately we have a slightly different color palette here. You can see there's our color and our shades. And if we hover over, you can see it gives us the variable name for any of these. You'll also notice that the primary being the main color for this is slightly larger than the variations we have for the different shades and tints and so on. We can change this so we can come into the list view and switch it over to our list view. And you can see there's our primary. Underneath it, there's our different shades. And as we kind of add additional colors, they will be listed in a list view going down. You can obviously come in and manage your color palettes, which will take you straight back into your color palette. So let's add something in. Let's say we'll create a harmonies. We'll go into something like split complementary, generate those colors, hit save, come back out, come back into our colors, and you see there's now our additional colors being added in. Again, if we switch back to the different grid view, you can see there's our shades. You can see the main colors are slightly larger. So that's quite nifty. So all those options are pretty useful and you can change your color palette. So if we jump to the default one, you can see there's our default color palette, change it to the list view, there's all our different colors. Now underneath, you've got a couple more options. You've got your color value, so we can open up our variables if we have variables for our colors listed here. You've got dynamic data, and you've also got the color picker, which we can pick and choose our colors. So we might want to choose this horrible yellowy color, and from there, we can add that in should we want to. All we need to do is click on the add color to palette. You can give it a variable name if you want to, so we'll call this secondary, hit save. We now have our secondary color inside here, and we can easily pick between any of those colors, any of those shades and tints, it's pretty simple and straightforward. So this is quite useful, nice way of doing things. I do still prefer the way that Maxim has his with the shades and it just, it's visually easier to get to grips with what's going on with the colors there. It's a good start, but I think it's still, there's room for improvement there still. So that's the color side of things. Let's move on now to the typography options. So inside here, you can see we can create our new typography scale. So things like your body text, things like your headings and so on. So let's change this first of all over to our normal text, body text, for example, click on create, and this will now create our visual representation of our text. So if you've ever used any other kinds of tools for dealing with sort of fluid typography, this is gonna be very, very familiar. The first thing is you've got your variable prefix, which is what you'll see here. So you might wanna change this to something like, for example, body. You can see that now changes it there. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna put it back to text, which is what I'm used to. 
Then you've got your scale type, so you can use T-shirt, which is basically your small, medium, large, and so on. You can use numeric, which is just basically one, two, three, four, whatever you want to set. Or you can switch this over to custom and create a custom set for whatever you want. We'll take a look at that in a moment when we move on to the headings. Now, let's go back to our T-shirt sizes. That's perfectly fine. Then you've got your baseline step, which is basically what's going to equal the default sort of value. In this example, 16 pixels on mobile, 20 on a desktop. Generally, medium is going to be the one you start off with. But if you work differently, you absolutely can change it from there. I think if you use something like... Tailwind, that uses a slightly different sort of base value. I don't know. I don't use it. Then underneath, we've got our minimum and our maximum. So these are the minimum values on a mobile, the maximum value on a desktop. So we can adjust these, and you'll see that we can simply change what we want. So if we set this to something like 18, you can see our fonts change. And if we say we'll set this to something like 24. So if you've got a small font, for example, I use Barlow a lot. It's quite a small font. I generally tend to set my base font value at 18 just to make it a little bit more readable. And then you can choose the type scale ratio. So if we say octave, it'll double the size of it for each step. If we choose something like the major thirds, you can see that's 1.25 multiplier. And the same thing goes then. We can do this for our type scale for our minimum for the mobile, and we can do it for our desktop. So we choose something like I guess you can see there's quite a large jump in between each of those. Again, you can choose to rename this if you want to. You can add a new scale. You can restart or reset this scale, and you can see the generated CSS. So if we click on this, there's the CSS. And as you can see, it's using clamp and it's using calc to make sure that we have nice fluid scaling typography, which is what every website should have. Come back out of that. We can then say, once we're happy with this, we'll generate our variables, click OK. And those variables we added in now, and we can start to use them. So if we come back out of this and go into our variables, you'll see there's our body text. So it's taken the name that we've given to that particular typography set. And inside there, you can see there's our 2XS right the way to 2XL and all the values listed for us. So we come back into our typography, for example. We create a new one, so a new scale. We'll change this to be headings. Click on Create. Now we'll change this over. Instead of text, we'll put this to be H. We'll get rid of the separator there. And you can see H2, HXS makes no sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this to be custom. And we're going to get rid of what it says inside there. And we're going to do what we want, which is we want heading 1 through 6. So we can do 6, 5, 4, and so on. So you can see now that makes more sense. If you like to work with this way, you can do that. And then you can map that to your theme style. You can use it whenever you want, however you want to set it up and work with it. And obviously, if you want to, you can set up different scale ratios, different base starting fonts. So let's say the base on mobile is going to be 24. The base on something like desktop is going to be 36. You can see the changes there. And again, we can change this over. So we could go to the octave, for example. And we could choose different variables inside there or different values inside there. Again, we can create utility classes should we want to. So we can click to create utility classes and add whatever we want into utility classes and remove them when we're ready. So you can see how this all works. Again, if we take a look at the generated variables, there's our H through 1 through 6 and the clamp and the calc values being used. And see there's our headings H1 through 6 with all the different settings set up. So that's how easy it is to be able to create those fluid typography scales and so on. And the same thing kind of goes when you come into your spacing. If we jump inside here, you can see there's our spacing options. So we'll just click on Create. And in much the same way, you've got the set of options inside here, which you can go through, adjust these to get the spacing the way you want, whatever variable you want, whatever kind of scale type that you want to use. And then hit the Create Variables, click OK. Jump over, take a look at your variables. There's your spacing. All your spacing is now set up, ready for you. So now when you come out of this, you want to apply some spacing. So for example, we'll choose our container. We can come into our layout. And from there, we can start to use our variables. So we might say we want to link all these together. There's our spacing. We'll say you want to put 2XL, for example. Your spacing will be applied. You get the idea. Choose your headings. We'll choose our heading from here. Come to our typography, because I haven't set this up using the theme styles. So we're just doing this on the fly. Again, we can click on here. We can choose our headings. Say this is going to be H1, for example. You can see it picks up the H1 size from there. So it's very simple, very straightforward. It's a blank starting point. If you want to import in, you can do so. Let's take a quick look at that. If we come into styles, for example. You come into framework. Inside here, you can drop in any kind of framework that you want to work with, and it will format it as close as it possibly can. I'd recommend taking a look at Thomas's video where he goes into this in a lot more detail and covers all the different aspects. But I wanted to bring this to you just to show you in my way 
just to sort of show you how it all kind of works, how you can get up and running. Now, the final thing I'm going to say is, would I start using this over what I currently use, which is Core Framework? The reality is at this point in time, I don't see the need to start with a blank slate. So I'm going to carry on working the way that I normally work. But if you do like to start from scratch or you're using something like an online tool to generate these things and you want to bring this in, or you've already created your own CSS framework and you'd like to be able to manage the variables and the classes and so on directly inside Bricks, maybe expand it should you want to with a visual way, then this gives you the options to do it. But as always, I welcome your thoughts and feedback. Drop a comment down below what you think of the new style manager options and I'd love to know. As always, all applicable links are in the description down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.